Yes, another big name, massive name, and an absolute hunk as well, Johan Mjelby. Thanks for coming on, big man. Brilliant to be here. Great to, to see you, man. You're Scottish. <laughs> I've forgotten about the Scottish Excellent. twang. Yeah. I mean, need to say, man, I've never felt like such a fat wee turd sitting across from somebody. You're looking great. Now, you didn't get a body like that playing the PlayStation. What are you doing to keep fit like that? Mm, I've never played PlayStation. No. That's why, you know. Uh -huh. uh, no, I'm still uh, still trying to be fit, you know. Got a crappy knee, but uh, still, still in the gym. Still yeah, yeah, definitely. Three, four times a week. Animal. You're an animal. Um, need to tell you as well, I went to Stockholm on my hun uh, honeymoon. What? You didn't tell me? Uh, what a place. We could have went for a beer. Exactly. I could have shown you some fact, great, I would not great restaurants. Name my missus. I'm sorry, I couldn't have. Mm. Um, still got the Sweden strips on my teeth as well. Mm, the yeah. snooze. <laughs> <laughs> right. Born in Stockholm, grew up in Stockholm. What kind of football upbringing have we got over there? A decent one. Uh, obviously, a good schooling, uh, playing for AIK. I went to AIK when I was only 13 years old. Uh, got signed in from a local team. And um, yeah, went uh, all the way through the youth teams and, and uh, was lucky enough you know, to break into the first team. And then uh, I played in Sweden you know, for many years before I signed for Celtic. So, uh, yeah, you know, the Swedish football is. Bit different nowadays. Uh, it's more, um, you know, when I when I grew up, it was more down to organization. It was a very strict four four two. Uh, we got obviously a good understanding of the game, you know, especially defensively. Uh, nowadays, it's more down to obviously uh, technical skills. A lot of teams, even in the top league, place on astroturf, which is shocking. Uh, yes, yeah, get that in. Uh, I'm not a, a fan of uh, AstroTurf. It's great for kids, yes, mm. to get them obviously facilities to train on and play on, but when it comes to obviously the top leagues all over the world, I don't think you should be allowed to play on AstroTurf. There you go. Uh, were you always stupid enough to play set and half? Uh, no, I was actually a striker, believe it or not. You know, when I started, uh, I was quite uh, smallish. And, and rapid, you know, I, I don't know what happened <laughs> when I grew up, you know, and, and became a, a, a man and started playing, obviously. So it was only really the first team in that you started playing set and a half? Uh, yes, correct. You know, I was probably the first time I played the set and a half, I was uh, 17, 18. Uh, yeah. Before that, I was uh, um, uh, a striker and uh, actually a winger, you know. And, and, but then, obviously, when I, when I uh, started to shoot away, you know, uh, and, and got quite tall, you know. I, you know, obviously, I had to change my game, and, and uh, because uh, I was never ever really a skillful player, I didn't have the technical level. But obviously, I had a, a, a big winning mentality, and I was very aggressive, you know. So I started to use that, and, and uh, obviously, that suited more to be a, like a holding midfielder or a, a son half. Uh, who were your heroes growing up in Sweden? Brolin, Dalin, or Brolin? Eh? Uh, not really, Bjorn Borg. Uh, I didn't really have, <laughs> I, I never had a, a, a footballing hero. Yeah, obviously, I love the guys who played for the, you know, uh, for Sweden in the World Cup '94. You know, and because they were so successful, you know, and uh, you know, I played with, you know, most of them as well. You know, uh, because they just retired when I broke into the uh, national team around '97. You know, they were still playing there. Uh, uh, but you know, football-wise. It was more probably Diego Maradona, you know, because obviously he was the he was the, the man, the big man, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the best player in the world, you know, at that time. Uh, one of my heroes, football heroes, is Swedish as well. Sven Gorn Eriksson. Sven Göran. I, I, I thought you would say Henrik. King Henrik. I thought you would say King Henrik. Sven, he's the man. Mm -hmm. uh, AIK, as you say, successful career there, but you refused the medal one year. Is that right? I did, yeah. Uh, before the season '92, I. Um, uh, I injured my cruciate ligament, you know, injury uh, uh, knee, and and uh, obviously uh, I didn't play that season. You know, I was more on my own. You know, back then, you know, we didn't really had. Uh, it wasn't like that the physios were were looking after you all the time, uh, and we were still not. We were not full time players. You know, even if we were one of the best teams in the country, you know, we still had. Most of us still had to, to obviously had a part time work. Oh really? Why is that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so obviously. When you in, when you have a really severe injury, you know, and, and we didn't have a doctor or a, or a, a physio looking after you all the time, you have to be in the gym, you know, on your own, you know. So I didn't really felt that I was involved, you know, with the guys, you know, with the boys. I was dead happy for them, you know, obviously winning the trophy, winning the title, you know. But uh, I was more uh, doing my own training, you know. So I had decided, you know, at uh, when the big big party was, you know, and all the boys were lifting the trophy in front of, you know. Was, that was the first time AIK had won, a, 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 won the uh, league for, for many, many years. I think 50 years, something like that. Yeah. You know? So obviously it was a lot of people you know, in, uh, outside waiting for us to come out. You know, but I didn't want to leave the truth because I wanted to be involved 
uh, myself, you know, and feel that I had won it, you know. So, so um, I waited another six years, but uh, then I got my chance. See, when you were part time, did you have a job then? Oh yeah, yeah. What, what were you working? At? Yeah, yeah. I was actually working full time. I was working model, with, model. Yeah, uh, not really, you know. Uh, I was quite ugly when I was young, you know. Uh, something happened, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I actually, I had a really good boss, you know, and I worked between seven and two um, every day. And then uh, two, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, I left for, for training. We started around, you know, four o'clock, you know, yeah. and, and uh, then I did my, obviously, team training. I was always in the gym afterwards doing training, you know, because obviously, you know, that's just the way I am, you know. I was very ambitious. I was very hungry, you know, to 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 do something, you know. And and uh, so I was probably at home at eight o'clock at night, you know. So it was long days, but you know, obviously that was the way to survive. And and uh, we didn't know anything. We didn't know anything else, you know. So it was not until maybe three years later, you know, around '95, where I started to you know, become a full-time player. And it's paid off because you're absolutely loaded now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you became one of the main men at AIK. Um, is that when you yep. said you won the league single-handedly for them? Exactly. Uh, no, uh, what, can, what can you say? And obviously, that was the only team I've played for, more or less, you know, uh, um, in Sweden. And, and uh, obviously, coming through the, the, the youth ranks and, and, and the being able to, to, to uh, you know, come through, obviously, the first team and, and become a really, really important player for them, that, that obviously meant a lot for me, you know. That was my team, ARK, you know. Mm. I had always been an ARK. Fun. So, so uh, for me, it was important to, before I decided to uh, move somewhere else or, or get a chance to, to go abroad, uh, it was important for me to win uh, the league, you know, and, and to say bye in that sense, you know. So obviously, for the fans, even if uh, obviously you always create new heroes and they have another heroes now, you know, I, I, will, I, will, I will have always been a very, very, you know, a big, big hero and big name for AK, yeah. So, Celtic come in for you? Was there other clubs as well or was it just Celtic? Uh, it, it was actually a, a couple of other clubs, you know, uh, not as famous as Celtic. Um, uh, I knew actually, you know, maybe two, three weeks before we won the league that Celtic were very interested, you know, and, and Joseph Wenglos and obviously the board had contact with my agent, you know, so, so I started to speak to Henrik because I played with Henrik uh, for Sweden at the time, you know, so he obviously started to tell me about Celtic. I didn't know that much. I knew that Celtic was a massive club, but it wasn't like I was following Scottish football at the time. Uh, so I started to watch a few games. We won the league and we were out of supporting, you know, the team. As you did. And then uh, on the Saturday, actually Celtic played away. I can't remember who they played. I think it was Hearts away. And, and, and uh, I remember Vila Risa too, was playing a Norwegian guy. Uh -huh. you know, and he has, an and he, he, has, he has put the ball across uh, Celtic's own penalty box. You know, obviously the opponent scored. And I said, Jesus Christ, this team, they, they're not too good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I was a bit worried. But... Uh, Henry convinced me, he said, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a magnificent club. Uh, you will more or less always play in Europe, which is obviously, you know, if you're foreigner, something is quite important for you. So, so uh, you know, uh, I'm, I've never regretted it. You know, I'm really, really proud of my years, you know, that, 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 that I played here, you know, and obviously uh, had uh, four years as assistant manager as well, you know, so 10 years at the club, you know, so uh, fond memories and, and I really, really love the club, yes. What was, uh, how was Dr. Joe Vengos when you first met him? Nice guy? Uh, oh, so nice, you know, too nice for his own good, yeah. um, I would say. A, a proper gentleman, uh, old school, he was getting on a wee bit. He was a bit unlucky, you know, because obviously at the time the team wasn't doing well and, and uh, obviously he paid the price so uh, at the end of the season you know he obviously said to let him go and, and uh, but that's how football works yeah. but for me it was obviously a bit uh, not difficult but uh, I started to understand how prof professional football works then you know because obviously uh, he was the one signing me and then another manager comes in you know straight uh, after it you know and obviously he's got his own idea so it was a bit frustrating at the time. See when you say it's too soft what, what do you mean just would you know, shout at players? Uh, no, I think you find it maybe a bit hard that, uh, you know, some players will always have a lot to say, you know, and, and sometimes you could feel that, you know, strong characters could, you know, in a way dictate dictate his decisions, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, that's the way it shouldn't be, you know. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to Mark Viduk in a bit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just on Henrik, um, see, before you came to say, obviously you played him in the national yeah. team, did you know how good he was at him? No, I did, you know, uh, um, I played against him uh, when he played for Helsingborg, you know, and, and uh, he broke into the first team 
at the quite, uh, it wasn't young by then, he was probably 20, 21, he broke through for the first team at Helsingborg and then he just suddenly, you know, six months later or a year later, he was playing for Feyenoord, you know. Uh, we knew already that he was a good, good player, but then he had a couple of, I mean, that shows the strength of Henrik, you know, the mental strength and the professional uh, uh, way he always conducts himself, you know. He had a wee bit of a hard time at Feyenoord, you know, and, and then obviously came here and, and started to, become this superstar because the way he played and mm. the way he conducted himself, you know. You could see that he, he was a really, really good player. You couldn't see like Slatan Ibrahimovic that Henrik would maybe become a superstar. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, for the, the way he plays the game, the way he works for the team, you know, the, the loyalty he shows, you know, uh, to his uh, uh, teammates is just second to none. It's, it's unbelievable. So, uh, to have the... I mean, to have the, the really good thing to play with him, you know, and see him daily here for so many years was just uh, sensational, you know. And, and, and the years he played for Celtic, he has grew and grew and grew. And uh, I was so happy, you know, because in Sweden, you know, some of the media, even if it was, it was superb for us, there was always this suspicion, you know, he's just scoring goals because he plays for Celtic, you know, he's not playing for any of the top leagues. And, so I'm so happy that he obviously he went to Barcelona, he showed everyone in Sweden how good he is. He went to Man U and, and showed everyone in Sweden how good he is, you know. So, you know, I'm really proud for him, you know, because he, what a fantastic player. Uh, right, the debut. Old firm debut. Oh, yeah. How yeah. was that? Was it explained to you before the game? Like, did you know how much the game meant to people? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I understood it was a big game, but I was a bit cocky, you know. Obviously, I had played uh, a lot of uh, Stockholm derbies, you know, for in front of 35, 40,000, you know, and, and I thought, it, you know, I mean, this this should be something similar to that, you know. So, I didn't expect, obviously, the the atmosphere and the build up, you know, uh, and and the, all the talk uh, between not only the fans, you got the media, and the, you know, or even the players, you know, uh, how big this game is. And, and uh, so, I signed on a Thursday. I thought I was going to travel back to Sweden to pick up, you know more clothes and etc. Uh, but uh, I stayed on and I was there on the Friday, trained. Um, I didn't expect to be in the squad really, you know, so I thought, okay, so I went into Jove Englis, you know, can I shoot off, you know, go on a flight and, and pick up, you know, more uh, things, you know. My night out shirts in there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so so uh, uh, I was surprised at being in the squad, but I was happy, you know, brilliant, you know, my first experience of the old farm, uh, sitting on the bench or, or in the stand, you know, I didn't know, because obviously the squad was 20 by, back then. Uh, so, so we went to a hotel, stayed there, and, and then uh, uh, the next day, obviously, the starting eleven came up, and uh, I was in it. And I said, ooh, ooh. Shit. And a half as well, because I had been playing, uh, you know, defensive midfield, you know, for a couple of years, so I was, oh, Jesus Christ. But obviously, the game started, <laughs> the first 10 minutes, uh, you know, I can, re I, I have to admit, you know, I was, I was shit scared, you know, because <laughs> the atmosphere, I was hiding, I didn't want a ball. My first touch was uh, atrocious, you know, a couple of times. I said, like, Jesus Christ. But 10 minutes in, you know, into the game, and this is actually a true story. I saw uh, Jord Albert, the rocket, he had a ball, you know, it was a bit, you could see, you know, and I was obviously going into midfield to win it, you know, to tack it, you know, from my center half position, you know. So it was a 50 50, you know. I said, and I had a poor start of the game. I had to really, really had to win this, you know. So, bang, it was 50-50, crunching tackling, you know, uh, made by, by both of us, you know, but it was only one man standing. And it was me. So, <laughs> then I could, hit, uh, I could hear the fans, obviously, you know, cheering, you know, and that lifted me. And then from then, I didn't look back, you know, for that game, you know, and, and I started to really play well and play simple and do the right things. And, and obviously, the game ended 5-1 to us as well, you know, and, and it was, was just, wow. Uh -huh. Were you blown away by the, the derby? Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. um, yes. One fact: How good was Lobo that night? Wow, Lobo. Uh, Lobo. Yeah, but Lobo was a wee bit of an enigma because you know I was trying to think. This play, he is unbelievable. You know, he's one of the best I've ever oh, seen. Had you heard them before? And, no. No. Yeah. No. I've never. I, I was starting when. What, what has he been, been doing with his career? You know, yeah. where has he been playing? You know. So so uh, uh, no, the skills uh, Lobo had. Uh, and, and showed us in training, you know, you know, daily it was sensational, great, great play, and what the debut yeah, he had as well. Celtic uh -huh. uh, obviously won comfortable that night. Were you surprised that never challenged more for the league after beating Rangers so comfortably? Yes, uh, 
you know, after the game, I actually it actually hit me. You know, I couldn't really understand that. Already by then, we were, you know, uh, before the game, I think we were 10 or 12 points behind them. You know, so obviously it was a big, big leap, a big gap. You know, in uh, points wise, you know, to 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 make up. You know, so obviously they gave us a wee bit of a lift. You know, winning that derby. You know, and thinking maybe we're nine points uh, behind them and we have a chance. You know, but obviously uh, you could see that. Yeah, we had a great old firm. We had a great game, my, my debut, but the next weekend we went to Hearts and lost 2-1. So that showed that the team wasn't, you know, uh, stable wasn't enough, there. you know, uh, uh, at that time, you know, in that season. So, so uh, uh, obviously, Rangers won that, uh, you know, won that season, you know, uh, won the league by a big margin, you know, and obviously that, that uh, made the, the decision quite easy for the board, you know, to obviously to go for someone else. Yeah, and John Barnes comes in. What were your first impressions of him? Uh, no, uh, I've always been a fan of Liverpool and John Barnes as a player, uh, definitely, you know, and uh, you have to remember, though, he, he was brand new into the management, you know, he hadn't never managed a team and obviously he was uh, supposed to have, you know, a lot of help from uh, Kenny Daglish as well. Uh, so I think, though, that to get Celtic or to take Celtic as your first job in management, you know, that is a tough. hell of a gamble and that's tough because Celtic is a massive, massive club and the pressure is on you. And I think, uh, <clears throat> I do think John thought it would be easier than it was, you know, because obviously he had played at Liverpool, been a world-class player, played at Newcastle, big team as well, you know, but I think he underestimated, you know, a bit, you know, how big and how important Celtic is for so many. Mm -hmm. uh, but then obviously you had to accept, he started to, to obviously build his own team, you know, and he wanted to play the old style Liverpool, uh, the, a wee bit like uh, uh, he played, you know, like a 4 2 2 2. But we didn't really have the players for it, you know, even if he brought, you know, he signed some players and they obviously decided to, to play. Uh, we had a poor, poor start. Uh, uh, for the season and, and uh, you know, uh, obviously halfway in then he, uh, you know, they, they made a decision to sack him. Did things turn quite toxic, obviously, the Duke incident at Inverness Cali? Uh, it, it does, obviously, you know, it, it doesn't matter how good you are as a player and, and if you're a superstar, you can't behave, you know, uh, in a certain way. You, you need to obviously, I mean, you need to respect Opponents, you need to respect teammates, you need to respect you need the club, especially, you know, because if you sign a contract, you know, and you, you, you need to show that you can handle that. And, and Mark, you know, with all the good things as a player he had, you know, uh, he was a top, player, yeah. a top, top player, you know. Uh, sometimes you wonder, obviously, how much hunger he had, though, you know, how much he really wanted, you know, was Celtic only a stepping stone for him. But uh, obviously he, he went to Leeds afterwards, you know, and, and and, and showed everyone that he was, you know, a top top player in Europe. But you know, you can't behave in any way you want. You know, you need to respect the boundaries. Is that probably the problem with that team that there was too many people like that? No, I think it was. Uh, I think you know, obviously, if you're not winning, if you're not doing well enough, you, there will always be some distractions, and, and it's important for you as a manager then to you know keep hold of it. You know, and and it was John's team. Uh, we didn't do uh, good enough. I wasn't playing regularly at the time, you know, because obviously uh, John brought in a, a, a few new names, you know, that played. So, so, but it was a few of us, obviously, that you know thought that we were good enough to play. Not like that we were arguing with John, you know, but we couldn't really understand why we couldn't get really get a, a look in, you know, uh, except obviously playing, you know, uh, you know, a couple of minutes every game. Uh, mm -hmm. But for me, for me, it was important to get playing time. So I was actually on my way because uh, I was playing for Sweden, we had already qualified for the Euro 2000 uh, championships, you know, and for me, I felt it was important for me to make sure that I would be in that team, in that squad, you know, but uh, as it happened, you know, John left or left, he got sacked and Kenny took over for the rest of the season and then when Kenny came in, I played all the games, you know, so... so I How was, was Kenny? That was a good guy. I couldn't really understand him, that was the only <laughs> thing, you know, and I'm quite good, I thought I, I got to... The hang of, of, uh, of Scottish after, you know, three, four weeks, you know, but, you know, I could never really understand Kenny. No, great guy, great guy. Uh, uh, you won the League Cup that year. Did that give you a wee taste uh, of what it's like to win trophies at Celtic and make you more determined to go on and, and uh, do well? No, I think it was important for the future to show, you know, especially for 
us that were still there, you know, when Martin is starting to build his team, you know, it was important for us, you know, to at least show uh, supporters that, you know, that we weren't dead, you know, <laughs> we could win something. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't maybe the trophy that we wanted at the time, but, you know, it was a trophy. A trophy is always a trophy. Uh, so it was important in a way to get that first smell, you know, of winning success. Uh, so then obviously Martin came in and, and uh, you know, he, he's in a way, football wise, he saved the club in a certain way because uh, he was clever enough to uh, bring in, you know, characters, uh, players that had something to prove, you know, good players that obviously not failed, but had a wee bit of a hard time, you know, down south, but you knew they were characters, they were good players and, and they were men. And that was you know, something that obviously Martin wanted to build in his team, you know, and, and the, you know, good on him. Can you, obviously it says Martin only arrives as you said, but can you remember the first thing he said that, to that squad? That, that turned it from a negative to a positive so quick? Uh, no, not really. Um, I, he, was re he was really easy and simple to, to work with in the way that he told you exactly what he expected from you. You know, for me, he, you know, the quote he always told me, you know, after I got a wee bit cocky, you know, playing for Sweden and being regular there, then, Johan, Johan, don't you ever dribble with the ball. <laughs> you know? As soon as you get it, give it to the better players. <laughs> but defend your own penalty box with your own life. And have the ball like you had the fridge, like you always do. Uh -huh. See, when he, he sent stuff like that to you in his first game, in, did you know straight away that he would be successful just through the way he handled himself? And uh, yeah, the aura. The then um, I think he was strong enough as a manager to, uh, to, to really make the club commit money to him because you need money to obviously sign good players. So it, it was like a new start a wee bit. After a couple of torrid years, torrid seasons, uh, Martin came in, he knew that he had a backing from the board, he knew he had a backing financially to bring in good players and, and that's the way it goes. Yeah, we can always have this romantic dream that, like Leicester won the Premiership you know, a couple of years ago, that uh, that will happen, you know, that you can build anything with any place, but that's not the true story. Yeah. You know, yeah, you obviously, as a manager, you, you decide what kind of way you want to play, formation you want to play, even if you can think of it formations, but in that, you obviously, recruitment is so important, you know, because, yeah, training is important, but recruitment for Players me are it's, on. is even more important. So you have to decide the way you want to play and then you have to bring in the right players to... to and how excited were you as a player when he's bringing in guys like Lennon, Thompson, Sutton? No, great. Uh, uh, no, I was really excited because you could see straight away, you know, the, the atmosphere in the dressing room started to change, you know, uh, we were men, uh, uh, there wasn't really any, you know, Martin didn't really work that much tactically on the football pitch. Um, he brought in players that knew the game, that knows the game. Uh, so sometimes when the tactic didn't really work, we could actually think it ourselves, you know, we just got together and sometimes we could say, hmm, it doesn't work, you know, we got to... So we didn't really always need Martin to tell us. We could make our own decisions now and then, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think that's uh, something that is important to know. I don't think that's common anymore because football has changed a lot. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of more PowerPoint presentations and all that. It's Boring. a lot of more tacticians, you know, obviously the... The management staff is so much bigger nowadays, you know, but uh, back then, you know, if you have the right characters, you know, sometimes, you know, you can, you don't need to give too much practice in. We can actually, we can change the game by us talking to ourselves as well, you know, because obviously you know straight away if you have a problem in the area of the pitch, oh, we need to do something. Because I remember when I was a young boy, obviously watching you train, every day was like a World Cup final, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so it was competitive. War. Uh, war. Would, would you, would you, get, an, would you get a lot of arguments with each other as well? Um, not too often. Me and Lenny, we always moaned, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that was more d during games, because yeah. he was supposed to cover me, you know, in front of me. <laughs> but obviously he blamed me for not talking to him in the right <laughs> way. You know, he should have been, you know, two yards right or left. Uh, no, training wise, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. But that's the way we wanted to be. You know, it was, um, was a World Cup final, you know, every day in training. 
maybe now and then we should have been more clever, you know, uh, uh, taking care of our bodies a wee bit more. But uh, we didn't. Tr our training session weren't that long, but the intensity was fantastic, you know, and and it was a lot of. Uh, uh, Played by uh, play based training, you know, a lot of you know uh, either small sided games or, or bigger sized games, you know. So 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 uh, like you say, you know, uh, uh, we drew up the intensity ourselves, you know. Did you ever expect that the treble in Martin Neal's first first year? No, uh, but I'm really proud of it. You know, I think that's you know it's, I still rate that as my biggest achievement. You know, because for me, you know, sports. And, and football has always been winning things for me, you know. You know, maybe if I had played, you know, in another club, uh, in another country, I would have earned more money. But that's, you know, and maybe not even won a single trophy. That's, that's not important. For you, important now when you're retired uh, is to look back and see that you've been in winning teams. Mm -hmm. you, you won something and you can be proud of it, you know. Uh, that year, uh, beat by Basel. You know why I know Basel 2002 is because I played the World Cup and I had a really, really good tournament because uh, I got nominated to the, the All-Star 11 there. I didn't get in, but I had a really good tournament, uh, even, even on the disappointment losing out to Senegal, you know, uh, because um, we went through the group of death there. Who was uh, that, England? Or not? Was it, was yeah, that England, England, Nigeria and Argentina. Yeah. Um, but I started to feel something in my knee, you know, and I had always had, you know, a lot of problems with my right knee. So, so I, was, I thought it was just a loose bone piece there, you know. So, so I started the season, you know, and, and then uh, Basel came up, you know, uh, playing against them, you know, and unfortunately we lost, lost out, you know, we had a Swedish referee as well. He was absolutely awful then. <laughs> but we won. I remember, we, I thought we won 3-1 here at home, yeah. and we thought maybe we were a bit, bit too overconfident, you know, but then over there we lost 2-0, you know, and that was really, really disappointing, really disappointing, you know. But I remember, you know, because after that I went in to, to have a look at my knee, you know, late 2002, uh, November, and uh, obviously I thought it was just going in and take out a loose piece of bone, but uh, obviously the... The surgeon, the expert, just uh, told me, I thought he was joking, because Roddy McDonald was uh, our doctor, club yeah, doctor, was yeah. with me as well. Uh, they said, this is the worst thing I've ever seen a professional athlete. Really? Yeah. God he sweet. said, you know, you should hang up your boots. I thought, they, I was just looking at him, and he, are you serious? I'm playing my best football in my career, you know. And he said you should retire? Yeah, you can play, probably play on for another year at this level, then it's just gradually going to... And how long did you play after that? Uh, I played on, you know, I couldn't cut the cord. Uh, I didn't say anything, I was a bit of a shock. Uh, I started to, obviously, uh, uh, I went for surgery, I was out for five uh, months, came back, then we got into the quarterfinal of UEFA Cup and started playing again, you know, and, and we had this run up to the final, but they were right, you know, because after that, and this is the summer of three, obviously losing out to Seville, uh, I could feel, I couldn't really, you know, uh, percentage-wise, I was just, Declining, I couldn't do anything, you know. It's just mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have any cartilage in your knee, it's just bone to bone. It's, it's, it's painful, but obviously, you know me, I didn't show pain. Mm -hmm. But uh, biomechanical, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't start run the normal way. So I started to. You're a warrior, big man. I started to become a really poor, poor player. So that was hard to take, but yeah. I couldn't really tell anyone, you know what I'm saying? So I should have cut the cord, but it was hard. But then you get to the UEFA Cup final. See, yep. when you came back at the quarterfinals, did you, when you were coming back and you were watching the rounds before it, did you think, we've got a real chance at winning this year? Yeah. What was definitely. it about that team? Why, uh, why was it so to that European? Because we, all, we always told ourselves, you know, uh, and, and especially now, if we meet up, we look back at that team and we think we should have done much better in Europe than we did. Because that was a really, really good team under Martin Neal. It was a good team. And we should have done better in Europe, you know, in the Champions League. You know, we should have qualified when we lost out to Lyon, you know, Big Bobo was a handball and yeah. we lost out on the penalty there. Uh, we should have done much, much better in Europe. But it was hard for us, you know, uh, being quite superior, except for Rangers, you know, because Rangers were strong back, uh, back then. Uh, uh, it, it was difficult, you know, being so dominant, you know, playing domestically. And then you come out and you play against really, really top teams that play a wee bit different, that will hurt you if you make mistakes that won't be punished when you play in the SPL. So, so that was probably the reason why we didn't do better in Europe, but you know, we should have done better, uh, definitely. But back then, you know, coming up to the quarterfinal, we had beaten Blackburn, uh, I think it was Stuttgart, yeah. and now we had Liverpool. And you know, for me, it's, that's the best oh, you said feeling you like ever. Liverpool, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, I do. But going to Anfield and beat them 2 0 and just show everyone down south, you know, because they were always, you, you know, it's always been this, these quotes and this, ah, oh, Scottish football is nothing, you know, you know all our, our teams in down south, we're so much better, you know. But back then, you know, I'm telling you, it was probably only Man U and Arsenal, I would say, were better than us because Chelsea hadn't got their money in yet, you know, no Abramovich was there yet, yeah. the Man City, obviously, no money. Uh, well, Liverpool was probably the third ranked team. So you think let's say could have finished third in the, the English Premiership that year? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You know, uh, every time we went down uh, south to play friendlies, you know, uh, playing Leeds or whatever, you know, we beat uh, we beat them easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to remember though, yeah, maybe not the first season a Celtic team would be in the in the Premiership. They would end up uh, top ten, but. Given them two or three years, they would be top three, four. It's a massive club, you know, and yeah. all the money, you know, the revenue it would re generate, you know, would just be sensational. But we knew that back then, you know, going to the Liverpool game, you know, if we can beat them, then we have a good chance to win the trophy. See, outside of Henrik, obviously, and that's the Seville team, who else did you really impress you that you thought he's a, he's a top player? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of them, you know. Uh, Henrik, uh, but I have to say Chris Sutton as well. Um, he was brilliant, wasn't he? Chris Sutton was a fantastic player, and he could uh, play anywhere, you know, any position, and still be the best player on the pitch. Did he show you how to play centre half? Uh, no, because I, I, he wasn't as aggressive as me. He was a better footballer, but I was more aggressive, so I usually kicked him you know, when I got annoyed with him. Uh, but, uh, no, no uh, Sutton was so impressive because he always gave us a target, you know, from the back. And, uh, um, it's not playing direct football or, or boring football, but when you get pressurized as a defender and, and uh, you need obviously to, to just dink the ball really, not play it behind the, the opponent's uh, defensive line, just play it up. You could, always, you could always aim at Chris, always aim at Chris, body, body. He just hold it up, he was so good at it. And obviously if, if Chris was injured or, or Suspended, you could always have John there. So that's why it works so well for us. You know, we always had Henrik to play uh, to his feet. Obviously, the two big guys, you know, to you know, aim at the body, you know. And then obviously, we just lift it up. Uh, it's just on certain. What, what kind of character is he? Is he how we see him on the telly? Yeah. <laughs> he's funny, isn't he? Uh, Chris, yeah, but you know, uh, Chris is is, is, a, is a clever boy. He's a clever, clever man. Uh, he's always had a lot of opinions. He wasn't really, obviously, back then, he wasn't the big talker or anything like that. Like, obviously, you see him now being in the media spotlight all the time, you know, and having his opinions. Uh, he, he wasn't talking all the time, you know. It was a bit, you know, if you didn't know him, I think you would say, hmm, this boy's a bit strange. But <laughs> when you get to know him, you know, it's, he, he, you know, he, you will know that his sense of humor, you know, he, he will, obviously, Trash you now and then, you know. Yeah. So, so, but you have to get used to it. You know. No, no, great guy, you know. And obviously, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for him now. Obviously, he's, he's the, he's a big man now. In, he's the nation's sweetheart now. In yeah. football industry. Would the, would the Liverpool game be your highlight of that UEFA Cup run? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Why? Just because you were written off? Uh, not written really off. It's, it's just, it's a special place to play football. Anfield. Yeah. It is, you know, not as good as, as uh, Celtic Park, Paradise, but. Uh, Anfield is, is a classic uh, stadium. It's, it's obviously a team with a lot of you know, fantastic history. So to beat them and especially show everyone down south that I mean, we have a really, really good team here, you know, it was a great feeling. It How was. would Martin be after a night like that at Anfield? Would he be jumping about the dressing room in that? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think after that game, you, you, know, you, know, you know, Martin, you know, he could just explode and enjoy, but then it was always obviously quite quickly. Starting to think about, you know, uh, obviously what we had to do, you know, next day in training or, or two days in training and, and planning and everything, because he's, he's a very int intelligent uh, guy, Martin, you know, and uh, uh, that's why obviously he's been very successful in in, in, in football. So, uh, uh, but, you know, obviously he, you could see Martin on the sidelines, you know, how much he meant for him when we scored, you know, yeah. it wouldn't, didn't matter if it was a league game or, or, uh, or obviously a cup game, you know, it's, it's you know, he, he was a very, very, he is a very, very passionate man. Uh, in that UEFA Cup run, who's the best striker you came up against? The best, would you say player? Or striker. Came, striker, hmm. Uh, you know, the best striker I've ever played against was the 
the real Ronaldo. You played against him? The real you? Ronaldo. He was absolutely superb. Did you beat him? I played against him in the quarterfinal in the Cup Minus Cup. Right. That was too early for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in 1997, when I played for AIK against Barcelona, they had a great team, Barcelona. Guardiola midfield, uh, Luis Figo, right wing, Stoico on the other side, Ronaldo up top. Jesus. But You're Ronaldo. So quick, uh, did you kick him? I tried to, but he was too quick, you know. He, he wasn't only quick, he was strong as an ox. He was really good on the ball, he was great in the air, you know. He, he's the best striker I've ever played against. Uh, but that run, that tournament, uh, I can't say I really was someone that I thought was, you know, wow. I would say probably I really liked, but I didn't come up against him, you know. It was probably Deco. He oh, played for Porto. Play Porto. Yeah. <laughs> So he was probably the, the best player in the competition with, with Henrik, you know. Um, but obviously Decker wasn't a striker, but you know, so I had to mention Ronaldo because, wow, that's the <coughs> best player I've ever played against. Amazing. Uh, second leg in Boa Vista, best, uh, best night of your career? Uh, no, I would rate Liverpool more because Boa Vista was different. Boa Vista, the pressure were on us. Yeah. The pressure were on us. We felt it a wee bit as well. We felt, oh, this is a team we should beat. This is a team we should, you know. We Would should... that be mentioned beforehand? We should beat this team? No, not mentioned, but I felt the, the atmosphere all around us, you know, the expectations were, we, we felt it, you know, the pressure was on us, you know, and it was, it was different, you know, obviously from the games beforehand when we played Liverpool. Even if we always expected, uh, we always put expectations on ourselves, you know, to, to obviously beat other teams. Uh, but what we said, you know, we felt we were so near the final, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't fail here. So, so it was difficult, you know, and they were so much better than we expected. You know, they were really organized, they were difficult to play against, you know. And obviously they had a threat going forward as well. Uh, but afterwards, yes, it's one of the best nights. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't play well. Over the two legs, we didn't play well. And not even close to the capacity we had. Uh, so, so to go through there, you know, and, and you know, get that win, you know, away from home, it was just surreal as well, you know, because obviously they were doing some work at the stadium, the Boa Vista Stadium, you know, uh, behind the, one of the goals, you know, was no supporters, it was just a wall, you know, strange. obviously they painted, you know, supporters on the wall, you know, it was just, it was strange, you know, it wasn't, the feeling wasn't like it was a semi-final in the UEFA Cup, you know, so, I, I'm, you know, obviously we were so, we were relieved. We're relieved, that's the, that's the word, you know, afterwards. You said about these intense situations and games, who would keep it quite like hard in the dressing room? Like who would be the, the guy that would be joking about? Uh, no, but you always said, you know, that's probably where Sati came in, you know, because he could always, you know, even when it was really in a big, big, big pressure, he could always crack it, a strange joke, you know, that no one understood. <laughs> uh, you had Tom, who was a live writer, Alan Thompson, you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, all of us, you know, you, you know you have a team you know, and everyone is different. Every, everyone is different, you know, how they work, you know, mentally, you know, uh, are you a big talker or, you, you know, some, some, some players, you know, talk a lot because they're nervous, you know. Some players don't say words, but show it out on the pitch, you know, instead, you know. So, so and, and, you know, I wasn't a big talker in the dressing room, but out on the pitch I spoke a lot, you know, and obviously I demanded a lot from my teammates yes. and, and from myself. Okay, uh, build up to Seville, how exciting was it? Uh, magnificent. Uh, I think it was, it was actually quite, um, it was interesting because, you know, uh, quite a number of us in the team uh, had, uh, you know, we started to obviously, uh, we had passed 30 and we knew, mm, this, this is our chance Last to win chance, a European uh, trophy for this club, you know. This is our chance, we're not going to get another chance, you know. Uh, uh, but the Billa was great. Uh, the Billa was great because obviously you could, you could feel the expectation from the supporters, you know. Uh, we knew before traveling out there that it would be just, you know, unbelievable amount of supporters, you know, at Seville, you know, at the game and even, you know, uh, you know around the city, you know, not uh, being able to have any tickets, mm -hmm. you know. So, so we knew it would be just a, a massive, massive game. That's why it's the, the biggest disappointment in my career is to lose, to lose the final in, in, in the way we did. Uh, uh, because I knew straight away this chance is not going to 
uh, materialize come again. again. Uh, it's not going to come again, you know. So, so uh, it's uh, you know, you know, when the final whistle goes, I just wonder if I had a spade, I would have probably have dug up the pitch and just <laughs> crawled underneath it to, because, you know, if if you you know, like I said, you know, um, all players are different. You know, for me, winning and losing. I, where everything, you know, I couldn't see a difference between it. it was always, you know, winning, you know, I didn't see losing. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, you know, I think for a lot of us, it was quite hard to, to handle losing, you know, and defeats, because that's why we were successful. Uh, so I still, uh, you know, I still think about that, uh, that game a lot, you know, because that's the biggest disappointment in my career, yeah. See, before it, were you nervous? Uh, yeah, uh, I was nervous, but I was. Uh, I saw it as a great challenge. We knew that Porto would be, you know, that they had a really good team. We knew they had a good team. Obviously, we we had got all the scouting reports on them. We, we watched them, you know, and, and we knew that obviously they had, you know, big big threats in the team, a good team. But we still felt that, you know, if we play the right way, we can use our our physicality. If we play quick enough, if we get the ball into the box, you know, we will. Uh, make a threat to, to them, you know, and, and but we obviously um, our ambition was to win the game, and and uh, you know afterwards I feel we should have won the game uh, because we had problems during the game, you know, at certain times, uh, uh, but when the extra time started, we were a much the stronger team, I remember, and then unfortunately the red card changed everything, you know, and we couldn't really, you know. Uh, we couldn't really uh, uh, do anything about it. Obviously, ten men and a red card, and it was too much for us, you know. But uh, uh, no, it's it's still uh, still really really disappointing because I felt that we were stronger than them. Uh, I felt we grew into the game. In a way, you feel so much, you feel so sorry for Henrik, obviously scoring two fabulous uh, headers, you know, and being so good, you know, and, and Did not you say sorry, to Henrik. No, I would never, never say sorry because, you know, I would never say sorry to anyone, you know, not even the Celtic supporters because uh, the only thing they spawned is that I always gave everything. Then yeah. sometimes I had really, really shitty games and I was poor. But, you know, uh, that's not your ambition. Your ambition was always to give everything, you know, and, and to, to do your best. See, when Bobo went in for that tackle, did your heart jump into your mouth? <laughs> I always... <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 always, you always did when he came charging, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he was fantastic, Bob, you know, he, he was so strong and, and big, you know, but obviously being that, it's sometimes when you're very aggressive as well, you know, the, it's going to look worse for the referee as well, you know, when, when you go on uh, full hard and being, having that size like, like uh, he had, you know, and, and the... Uh, that's, that, that is obviously, you know, a disappointment. Uh, if you speak to Bobo, he would probably say, yes, disappointing, you know, that, you know, uh, I didn't really control myself. But you can blame him. It wasn't really that much in it, you know, and, and uh, but... Uh, See, playing next to the big man, did you always kind of need to keep him on a leash? No Bobo, like, no... Yeah, he, he, you had to speak to him, yes. Uh, I would say, you know, in the back three with yours to the left and Bobo in the middle and me to the right, I was probably the speaker, the organiser in the back three, yes. Uh, uh, Bobo was obviously, you know, he, he was the one that we could always rely on because he was, he was very quick for his size, uh, he was so strong, he, uh, he, he never lost a header, but both me and yours, we had obviously expecting to lose a header because that's how you do and cover him, you know, if that happened, but it never happened. But uh, yours probably was the one they were struggling most. And not, he's probably the one who had the biggest ability of us three, but he had to play a wee bit on the left, you know, which probably didn't suit yours, you know, yeah. but yours was quick as hell. Was he quick, yours for him, was yeah, he? Yeah, very, very quick. Looked like he was a quick again. defender. No, he was quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, was, but he was probably unlucky that he had, play on the, he had to play on the left a wee bit, you know, because yeah. obviously neither of us three had a left foot. Yeah. Would the three of you get together before games and talk tactics and stuff like that? Because Petrov said when they played Liverpool, Lambert pulled him and Lennon and talked about Gerard Murphy in the midfield and Lambert said, I'll take Gerard. Would you, would you no, we always did, things? but we always got the, obviously clips from who we were going to come up against, you know, yeah. you know who of the, depending on uh, the system that the opponent... Uh, Used, you know, had, did they play with two strikers or did they play a, a three up? 
uh, obviously we always looked at them players you know how we obviously they, they function and you know what kind of decision they made you know and the, uh, the interplay they had so, so obviously but, but like we played like a, a, a straight uh, uh, back free, so mm. so there wasn't like we any marking influence, you know. If if Bobo went up central, then obviously me and yours had a cover, you know. Obviously, if I went, they had to come over, you know. Uh, Bobo and yours, but it worked really really well. And, and obviously, we were very attack minded though with our wingers, you know. So sometimes we had problems, you know. Obviously, to change it and going back, you know, because sometimes it was big big gaps. Because as a back free, you can't be too too wide, too wide, mm -hmm. you know. So it was big areas outside us sometimes and. As a centre half, you don't really always want to be out there, you know. Uh, you're rather just waiting inside, you know. So, so, so that was probably where we uh, sometimes fail a wee bit, you know. The transition coming back uh, and, and you obviously uh, uh, gap, creating big gap gaps just for run, opponents. A gap would run. just run forward, wouldn't yeah. you? Uh, yeah. uh, just on the UEFA Cup final, how, how annoying was a play act and I need to ask you about Very, very. Would you but, say to them, stop it? Yeah, yeah, first you get frustrated, then you start obviously shouting at the referee, then you start to obviously, you start to go in even harder in tackles, but that's going to work against you, because then obviously it's going to be free kicks, which they want to have, they so want to have free kicks all the time, you know? so it's really, really frustrating, but at the, other, at, the, uh, at the same time, you have to understand, that's just the way it works. We probably wouldn't, but we could have done it, you know, obviously, if we were in the same position. It's, it was probably not in our DNA to do it, but, you know, it was our fault that we had let them take in the lead, you know, so we just, and, and obviously how the game worked, so, so, so we can't use that as an excuse, but it was, oh. So frustrating. But that's just, that's just a cultural thing as well, though, you know, obviously it's, it happens more often in, obviously, the UK now because of the influential you know, play foreigners coming in and playing, you know, so you see it more often. But back then, you know, you was never ever you saw anyone play act, you know, here in the UK. But, you know, so, so you have to get used to it. He's, he's raging the, the dressing room at full time. Like. Oh. Is that what was always getting spoken oh. about? That was probably, yeah, but in a way that was probably a good thing though, because then we can use our rage against each other, you know, because, you, you know, you're so disappointed and you're so close, but you, you don't make it. And, and there's a lot of, Tension, <laughs> aggression and frustration. Uh, we spoke to Big Rab uh, and he said about that night as well, he obviously came in for a bit of criticism with, with a couple of the goals. Um, he says that you were the, his favourite defender to play behind, by the way, just to let you know. Um, but did you feel Can't for Rab that. after that game? Yeah, uh, as a goalkeeper you will always come into um, uh, criticism, but, you know, being a goalkeeper as well, you know, uh, you always expect it to keep clean sheets and you know save everything, you know. And if you, you know, obviously if it's a good enough strike or, or finish and it's in top corner, then fine. But you know, if you just a week a wee bit mistake, it's, it's hard to change it. You know, as a defender, if you make a mistake, you have a chance because you have a goalkeeper behind you. You know, they can save you, and and you obviously got a couple of teammates. So, so it's it's a it's a precur precarious. Uh, position being a goalkeeper as well, you know, and, and obviously it's unlucky for Rab in a final like that as well. But was it that bad? Nah, I no. don't know. I don't know. We never ever blamed him anyway. You know, we never ever blamed uh, Rab for not uh, winning winning the the UEFA Cup final. You know, we 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 know that we failed. We know that we were very close, we know we should have done better, but you know, it is what it is, you know, but it's, like I said, you know, you just brought this up too much now, because, you know, I, I was already so disappointed. <laughs> Sorry you know, about My biggest you disappointment. Hug? <laughs> yeah, hug. Come on, we'll hug it. Um, see, making mistakes at a big club, how hard is it to, to, to get right back out and play again on a Saturday? Is it tough? It is very tough. Uh, I'm telling you, especially, you know, and that's probably, um, one of the best things for me, uh, being here at Celtic, you know, for so many years and, and I had a chance to play for this great club is that it's a good school to go through mentally. Because if you make mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. you need to be strong enough to take it, you know, and come back. Uh, because otherwise they will eat you alive. Yeah. That has to, it's, it's been a lot of very good players that have not been able to handle the pressure at the big club like Celtic. Yeah. Okay, just going to your final year, uh, did you know it would be your final year at Celtic? 
yes. Nodney. Yes, I did. You know, um, obviously my, my con contract was running out. Uh, everyone at the club knew about my knee. Uh, they knew that uh, I, you know, they couldn't get many games out of me. You know, uh, in fairness, I didn't want to leave. Uh, so, and I had also had a good relationship with with Martin and. Uh, but he couldn't really convince the board, which I can understand that, you know, they, they only offered me a contract pay as you play. And I knew, you know, with my shit in the I'm not going to be able to play Biscuit. that much. <laughs> uh, no, because I, I was really happy here, you know. Uh, I was really happy at the club. I was happy um, uh, living here in Scotland, you know, and, and I really enjoyed the place, you know. I didn't want to go anywhere else, but uh, I was actually on my way to retire. But then suddenly, you know, I got the offer from Levante in Spain. Oh, I love your life. Uh, and uh, I was really naive uh, because I thought maybe the, the 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 sun and the heat is going to help my knee, you know. Because in my head I was still a footballer, you know. I couldn't understand. I was quite bitter. And I couldn't understand that uh, why is this okay. happening to me? I'm, you know, I still want to play. Uh, so uh, uh, I signed for Levante instead because they obviously got, offered me a contract. Uh, a, a, proper contract, you know, but, in, you know, in hindsight, I should have probably stayed, uh, stayed on. Uh, Martin had probably given me a few games here and there, but it would have given me a good chance to get into, you know, uh, coaching or management or whatever, you know, the club could have helped me in that sense, you know, so, uh, but, but, you know, I, I decided to go to Spain, uh, another adventure, you know, but my knee, I couldn't do anything. After nine months, I had to rip up the contract, you know, in Spain. And, and How was Martin when you left? How was he? Was, was there a wee chat? Uh, no, no, yeah, well, yes, but he understood me, you know, he understood me because obviously he knew that, you know, I had played quite a number of years for the club, you know, and, uh, you know, if you have a young family, you, you, you want to have a, you know, like a stable contract and he knew that what you're going to get. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and probably because I was a wee bit naive as well, you know, because in my head I was still, a, you know, mentally I was still a footballer. And uh, that could still play at the same level as I used to do, but you know, that wasn't really the case. So, yes, uh, so. Surprised to hear Finney Lennon to come back as a coach. Where were you sitting? What was your first reaction when Neil phoned you? I was actually in uh, my restroom in the house. You want an honest, honest answer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was so surprised. What's the restroom? Yeah. The toilet? Yeah. What's in my house? <laughs> I remember was number one or number two? No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, he, he phoned me you know, out of the blue. Um, I didn't know at the time that Tony Mowbray obviously had, uh, they had released him and, and I knew that, you know, obviously me and Neil during the years had had some contact. He was interested to obviously bring me on if uh, ever a, a club job would materialize. I knew obviously he was working with the under 21s at yeah. the time, you know, so uh, he phoned me, Neil phoned me and said, you know, uh, Johan, you, you need to give me a quick answer, you know, you've got a minute here. Uh, to think about it, you know, I, I want you to come over, just, you know, it's probably just going to be for three months. Good experience, you know, I want you to be obviously help me and uh, uh, take care of the, the Celtic first team, you know, until the end of the season, you know, it's it, obviously, it's no promises, you know, if we do well, yeah, maybe we can have a chance to, to, to get the gig, you know, for a couple of years or, or to build our team, but just to you know, try to obviously survive and come in and, 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 and you know, create a happy place, you know, for the club. So I thought, oh, I was just thinking. I was, uh, uh, I was shouting down the stairs to to, to my missus, and I uh, said, you know, uh, I'm just going to pack my bags, you know, because <laughs> I need to go to Glasgow for three months. You know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. uh, so it was brilliant. No, it was brilliant. And obviously, we were lucky enough to to uh, keep uh, going and build our own team, you know, for for a number of your seasons, you know. And, and, and did, uh, did, he tell, did he tell you about a magnificent midfielder he had in the twenties? No, I remember you. Uh, <laughs> Hope I remember a good, good player, technically, but he was so unfit, you know, but he didn't want to listen to me. I said to him, if you are fit enough, you could always become a top player. I know, I wish I'd listened to you, mate. I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Um, what, were the, what were the glaring issues still when you first came in at Celtic? Say again? What were the issues when you first came in with Neil? With the first team oh, squad? you mean now in management? Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, the issues are obviously um, the lack of confidence, uh, understandably, you know, uh, after uh, uh, quite a poor season, obviously that's the reason why a manager has to go. Uh, uh, the confidence was quite low, we, you know, it wasn't really much to change football-wise because you don't have the time. Yeah. I mean, we, we got in in March, you know, it's not much left of the season, you know. It's more of saving the season, suddenly so restart playing, you know, a bit more positive. 
uh, start to be play a wee bit more aggressively, uh, express themselves a wee bit more, but especially in you know, us create a more happy place, you know. A wee bit like uh, Solskja did at Man U, you know, you, you ask a quick fix for a while, you know, because you don't have time to change the playing style. A bit yeah. like Neil Lennon right now, you know, taking over from Brendan Rodgers, you know, you can't change the, the style of football, you know, because that would be... Uh, stupid, you know, when you only have, you know, a couple of months left of the season and the players are so used to play in a certain way, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so you just have to be, you, small, small changes, small changes. maybe um, team selection, you can change team selection to suddenly because you come in with open eyes, you know, and you see it a wee bit differently than the, the manager before you. Okay, when did you find that you got the job permanently? Uh, yeah, that was obviously in, in June, in June, and uh, uh, I'm sure there was a couple of other candidates, but uh, we finished this, that, that season strong, you know, it was really important and vital for us to, to beat Rangers uh, in old firm. We lost out, and that's why we thought we wouldn't have a chance to get the job when we lost in the, in the, in the Cup, uh, uh, which was very, very disappointing, you know, we thought, oof. Yeah, I think yeah. it was against Ross County. Ross County yeah, yeah, exactly. And we thought, nah, no chance. You know. But luckily, you know, Neil uh, got the job, you know, and we had a chance to, to start building our own side, side uh, to a certain degree and obviously implement, implement the, the, the tactics the, and the way of style that we want to have. Were you always a good cop? Well, any obviously going mad at people, were you always the uh, guy? Uh, no, I would say that Neil, Neil is always, as a manager, he would always be the bad cop, but uh, I wasn't probably, I was probably a bad cop as well, you know, and then you had the, uh, Gary Park and Alan Thompson at the time that were probably the good cops, you yeah. know, uh, but uh, obviously Neil, Neil is, have, he always has the final say, he's the manager, he's the one obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, deciding the tactics and the, and the formation and, and the team selection, but obviously asking us. Uh, I had to, you know, I concentrated more on the defensive side of, uh, of the team, you know, and, and uh, I think Gary and, and Alan more decided, you know, more focusing on the Attack. going for attacking sense of, of the team. Uh, any other season, you look back 92 points, lost the league by one point. How hard was that to take? Always hard to take, you know, uh, especially after 38 games. Jesus Christ, you know, it's, uh, I mean, you're in a game for, for winning, you know, and to lose out with one point is just dreadful, dreadful. Um, is it harder to take as a coach or a player? As a coach is harder, you know, being a coach is harder or a manager, it's much, much harder, you know. Um, being a footballer is the best job in the world. Being a manager, yeah, it's a primary second one if you love football, you know, but it's, it's much more stressful. Mm -hmm. It's much more frustrating because you have 20, 25 uh, different minds to uh, try to sort out. Uh, as, a, as a player, you can, yes, it's a team game, but you can focus on yourself. You know, you have to make sure, obviously, you, you do your training perfectly, you, you, that you look after your body in the perfect way and, you know, that you're professional enough. You know, that's, that's your responsibility as a player. But, you know, when you're a manager, you, are just, you worry about things and you worry about everything. So, so it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, now and then to be in, in management, yes. Uh, just again on Lenny, uh, what do you remember then at your time, Castle? Fan came on. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I just remember, you know, I saw... It, so as a wee glimpse and you know, someone was running in, you know, at the time you know, I was just focusing on because the, obviously you know, the two teams that we were playing, we were playing, you know, and there was obviously football playing on the pitch, you know, so, so uh, luckily Alan Thompson was the one seeing this guy running up uh, mm. to Neil, you know, and, and being able to intervene to a certain degree, you know. No, never so, done so, much today. So, <laughs> no, but, uh, no, but we were all shocked, you know, it's just, uh, it's dreadful, yeah. dreadful. How hard was it trying to keep Lenny's spirits up when stuff like that is happening? No, you have to remember though, you, you know, everything has been gone through, you know, he, he's a strong character, he's a very strong character. He, he loves the game, he's very passionate, uh, to a certain degree he, he loves the limelight, you know, otherwise you don't decide to obviously be a Celtic manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he's strong in that sense, you know, but even him, you know, uh, uh, you know, after everything that's happened to him, you know, obviously, I think he gets down now and then, you know. But, you know, it's better to be like Neil is, you know, to speak out, speak up, you know, about it, you know, and, and also tell people what, what he thinks is wrong, you know, than just be quiet and not showing any emotions. Yeah. Uh, second season, uh, was it a bit of the same feeling after Sevilla? Determined to put it right and win the league at you? 
No, it was important for us to do that. Uh, uh, like I said, you know, with our background, we, we have always been winners. You know, we really, really want, obviously, for us to stay in the job as well. You know, it was, I think it was important for us to win uh, and assure the board that we got a winning formula here. You know, we, we, we are able to create a team that are able to, to win the league and win tro trophies. So, so sure, you know, it was it was great, great feeling, but. You think about how you can improve the team all the time. You never, you know, you never rest on your laurels. Yeah. Uh, be honest. Did you think your time was up three 0 at half time? Yes. yes. Did you think you get the sack? Uh -huh? Yes. And what, what what turned it round? Was there a special talk at half time? Did you say that to the players at half time? You could lose our job here. Yeah, but we told them we don't care if we lose our job. We should lose our job if uh, we lose this game. So it's up to you know, it's up to you guys. You know, you either show that you play for us, you know, or, and, and play for yourselves. Because it's dreadful it was happening here now. So, so what, what changed then? What changed after that game? Uh, you got the first one back and obviously they showed spirit. You know, the quality was always there. But you know, at the time we were going through a really, really tough spell. You know, which we didn't really understand at the time. I remember you know, we had a lot of team meetings. Meetings between ourselves, you know, we were trying to find out, you know, we couldn't really understand why we weren't really, you know, obviously winning as, as many games as we should uh, because we, we had the players, you know, we had the quality. Uh, but then suddenly we just got one back, you know, and, and, and obviously we had told him half time, yes, go for it, go for it, you know, don't think defensively in any sense, just go for it. And, then, you know, when that gets going and, and the players are starting performing. That's too much for most teams here in Scotland, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why we came back, you know. But I was, you know, I was more expecting that we should you know, get a win as well. You know? So I was a bit disappointed. After <laughs> you talked about the quality players who impressed you in that team. Who, who did you enjoy watching and coaching? No, but you know, uh, it was so many of them, you know, over the years. Virgil Van Dijk, fantastic. Wow. You know, straight away when I saw him, you know, this guy is you know, really you know straight away. Yeah, he's top. unbelievable, unbelievable. What did he have that you had? I've never had. Yeah, first of all, um, obviously he's very skillful technically, uh, both, uh, both feet, you know, very good, you know, he can strike a ball, he's great in the air, and he's quick for his size, and he's a leader, he's even more leader now. Uh, it took him a while to show his leadership qualities, but that's because he was brand new into the team. The only thing you had to uh, make sure of that he was focused enough, because the too game was too easy for mm him. -hmm. I, I, I get that problem as well. But brilliant, brilliant player. Yeah. Uh, won the first title as a coach. How good a feeling was that? And how, how does it compare again to being a player? Really? Uh, it's, even, it's probably better, you know, to a certain degree, you know, because you can enjoy, you can enjoy winning a wee bit more, even if you have planned, for, you, you have to plan for other stuff, you know. When, when, you, when you're a player, you're just in the bubble, you know, you don't think too much. You just win, you know, yes, you know, it's the, the joy, you know, straight off, and the party is straight off, you're winning something, it's great, you know, but, um, but you don't think too much about the future and like that, you know, it's more now when you can, you know, look back, look back it's great, but uh, in management, it's, 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 it's a more sense of a satisfaction, you know, because you know that you, you've been all together, uh, you know, for so many days, you obviously uh, picked most of the time the right team, the right formation. We've done the right things on the training grounds. So it's, so it's uh, the sense of satisfaction is, is fantastic after winning something in management. Uh, would that coaching staff enjoy a celebration as well? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, on to Barcelona. 2-1. How do you prepare a team to go and play that Barcelona team? Uh, wow. Um, Tromboa. Just pick out the Tromboa. Exactly, but, but it's, it's, it's a lot of people asking me, you know, but you couldn't get out of the halfway line, you know, why, why did you sit in so much? It wasn't our tactics, because they were so good, you know, we couldn't get a ball off them, you know, that's why they obviously put us in our own half. But, the good thing is though, the two goals, the first one is straight from training ground. The, the corner? Yes. Yeah. We, we obviously pinpointed Barcelona, how are we going to beat Barcelona? Not playing football, but we will beat them if our goalkeeper is going to have a fantastic game. If we are a threat at set pieces, you know, we can really, really threaten them at set pieces, you know, corners, uh, uh, free kicks, etc. Or on the counter-attack. So the good thing is the two goals 
obviously the corner that uh, um, Vanyama scores is straight from the training ground and and uh, then obviously we're a bit lucky with the counter attack that Tony Watt scores because it's a mistake from Mascherano but he's still in the in in the you know in the way we want to threaten them you know to go on a counter and you know if we want the ball from midfield we wanted to obviously Try to go in behind them, you know, as quick as possible, you know, to, 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 because they, they play with a high line, you know, because they have the ball all the time, you know, and, and it worked. Even if it was a mistake, Mascherano was a great finish from Tony, you know, and, and you know, fa fantastic. What a win! How was that feeling when Tony was scored? There is no, I actually I didn't really celebrate that much, you know, I was really happy, but I was just thinking, oh God, it's ten minutes left. Kelvin Wilson said, said that as well. Jesus <laughs> uh -huh. Christ, ten minutes left, you know, and you know. See, when you're watching on the side, is it just constant nerves on the side when you're watching a game like that? But, yeah, but you get... Are you fearing the worst? Yeah. In a way, you, you're so focused on them, you know, you know to keep uh, following the tactics, you know, the, the, obviously the mass plan, uh, to do the right things, you know, make sure, especially here when I was here, you know, obviously make sure the defenders do the right things, they're on the right, you know, positions and all that, you know, so a bit... Brain dead in that degree, you know. You just think about, you know, they have to do the right things all the time, you know. So, so it's not many emotions during the game, you know. You know, obviously you got before the game, half time, and after the game, you, yeah. the emotions gonna come out, you know. But otherwise, you, you try to be so focused, you know, because even if you get angry after a mistake, the mistake has already happened during the game. So it's no point really, you know, to run up to Simon Farrell and tell him, come on. I tell you, fuck off. Because yeah. you've already made a mistake, you know. So it's better to wait and obviously speak to you afterwards and yeah. say, you know, maybe you should think about this, you know. But see, at the final whistle, can you then go back to your player head on and celebrate like a player? Were well, you in amongst it with the Yeah, you can, you know. I thought we were quite close to the place, you know. And obviously, all of us, we, we, we have played the game, you know, at a, a very, very high level, you know. So you know it's, it's, it's not PlayStation. It's quite hard out there. It's quite difficult out yeah. there, you know. And, and uh, uh, so, so, which helps, you know, and, and it's good, obviously, having Neil as a manager. He knows, you know, you know, some players, they need to relax a wee bit after games as well, you know. Yeah, obviously, it's much stricter nowadays, you know. Uh, players need to look after themselves much more. We know much more how to look after ourselves as well, you know, so it's not the same. But, you know, now and then, you know, obviously, the players, they need to relax as well. So, you know, would you just go out and have a beer with the players? Yeah, it happened, yeah. Uh -huh. And did you get steam in there? No, so I didn't. That's why I, I always tried to stay. You were carrying away. I always tried it. to stay away. You know, I let the other coaches do it right? uh, and the manager. You know, but good. Uh, League One comfortable at making it three in a row. Yeah. How uh, how proud do you feel now when Celtic like, look like they're going to win eight in a row? That, that if they do eventually say get a nine or ten, that, that, that you were part of that. Uh, no, uh, of course I'm great to to be proud of it. I don't I don't expect less. You know, really. You know. Uh, if you do something, you, you have to go, go for it and, you know, obviously make sure you, you, you win trophies. So, uh, to be part of it, yes, brilliant, you know. Uh, they're not there yet, though. We have to obviously wait and see. Yeah. Uh, I will always expect Celtic to, to win trophies and, and win leagues, you know. But obviously, I think the competition is going to become harder and harder and tougher and tougher. I mean, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, it's, it's a great football club and, and uh, they're doing you know, all the right things right now, you know. And, and, to even think about them winning a triple treble is just unheard of, you yeah. know. And that's very impressive because I'm not talking about the league, you know. That's only, you can you can correct the mistake in the league, you know, because it's 38 league games. And but you know to to be able to win two straight, you know, with the four straight cups, you know, it's that is in a one-off games. That is very very impressive. See, when you see Brendan Rodgers' record in Europe, does that make yours even more special? Yeah, not special, you know. Uh, uh, that a great but, achievement. Uh, uh, it was a great achievement. Yes, we lost out quite heavily to Juventus. It wasn't as that uneven that the uh, scoreline suggested, but you know, obviously we made a few mistakes. And Juventus, you know them; they won't give you anything for free. Mm. Uh, but uh, not not special. But I think it was a good achievement, and it was a, a, you know. A, good uh, achievement from the team to, to be able to obviously make the last 16. But that's something that I think Celtic should do at least every second year, yes. You do? You think they should qualify for the last 16 every second yeah, year? Yeah, I think so. I know it's much, you know, nowadays financially it's more and more uh, difficult, you know. But you have to remember Celtic is a big, big club, you know, and, and uh, every second year we should be able to uh, 
get the right players in or, or build the right team to be able to at least you know at least qualify for Champions League. Okay. Uh, finally, how would you look back on your uh, Celtic career, both player and coach? Yeah, as a player, I, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm really proud to, to have been part, uh, uh, been part and been a player for, for Celtic Football Club. Yes, because you know I think I, I the only thing I hope the supporters enjoyed that I always gave everything. You know, I could only play one way, and that was to give everything. You know, uh, I didn't have the most skill. Um, I wasn't the best defender, but you know, I, I showed heart, and you know, at times, you know. Uh, I, I was aggressive and strong enough, you know, and, and they knew what they got, and mm. the, the, I hope they're happy for that, you know. But you know, uh, I've won a lot of trophies, which is great. I had a lot of uh, great experience in Europe as a player, and then obviously in management, you know, that was more of you know luck, you know, obviously, and uh, good connections with Neil to coming in. But it was a, a really interesting part of my life, you know, my football life, to be assistant manager, you know, for four years, yeah. Really, uh, and finally, future. We're going to see a manager, Johan Melby. Oh, I don't know about that. Not Peter in Sweden. Head, Peter Head job, man. Yeah, yeah, Peter Head job. Yeah, That's a good it. one. <laughs> uh, no, I would definitely, I would definitely not say no to a, um, a new adventure abroad. Definitely, you know, um, it doesn't matter if it's manager or coach. Uh, but I'm not interested in, in a gig in Sweden. No, it's not that I'm talking down with Swedish football. It's just that. Uh, I, I lost a wee bit of um, motivation being in Sweden for the last three years. Um, so uh, I've finished my pro license, so I got all my badges. I'm just helping an amateur team right now, which is good. It's back to basic to a certain degree. Obviously, it's a bit frustrating because they don't know the game as well, obviously, as professional players. But it's, it's good fun, you know, uh, and it keeps me involved. But uh, I'm not interested in, in uh, you know, any team in Sweden. You know, so, so we'll see what happens. OK, last question. Yeah. If Neil Lennon gets a Celtic job next year and he asks you to go back as assistant, would you go? Oh, most definitely, yes. OK. Right, I'll see you in the dugout next year. Cheers. Thanks, you, Cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs>